What's up, guys? It's NFL Week 16, and we're taking a first look at the DraftKings main slate. It is a monster week of DraftKings, by the way. We got a two-game Saturday slate, I think a three-game Monday Christmas Day slate. It is NFL non-stop for Week 16. I'm excited. I'm hoping that a lot of you guys made it to round two of the playoffs. This is round two of the fantasy playoffs. And oh my goodness, some of the guys that got us there, Tyreek Hill, you know, Jamar Chase, a lot of injuries in week uh, 15. So we're going to cover all that. We're going to take a look at some of these matchups and let's jump over to the matchup screen to get started. Um, and this is where I always like to get started uh, with my research for uh, a fresh week. Well, what do the games look like? What do some of these totals look like? Um, this is a nine gamer, obviously, because uh, a lot of the games are just spread out in weird times in week. 16. So let's run through it real quick here. We've got the Colts at the Falcons. Um, Colts side, another injury. Moss, maybe Jonathan Taylor will be back this week. We'll see. This game doesn't project, uh, you know, projects actually a little bit better than I was expecting it to. The Falcons, just such a boring team. Arthur Smith, just terrible. Um, cannot trust Beach. I just can't trust anything here. Although, once again, unfortunately, I'm almost sick over it, but do have to have mild interest here in. Maybe I think this Drake London spot. I don't know. They're at home. It might be a Drake London spot on the Colts side. Uh, Pittman gets hurt last week. Moss gets hurt. So we have to really get a sense of what who's going to be healthy for this game. And it's really too early in the week to know. Packers at the Panthers, uh, 36 and a half pointer. This is gross. Don't need to get a whole lot of fantasy goodness from a 36 and a half point total game. Moving on, right? Cleveland at the Texans, 42 and a half point total. Close game. I think C.J. Stroud probably should be back from his concussion this week. Who knows? Um, it's not the best matchup, though. You really don't want to pass against Cleveland. So I think, like, if you did anything, you got to run against Cleveland. It's a really interesting spot for Devin Singletary in that game. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but Singletary is getting so much volume. Flip side, do I really need to target a lot of players against the Browns? Probably not. So I I'm thinking about it, but that one's on the back burner a little bit. This next one is uh, kind of an exciting game. Lions at the Vikings, indoor game, love that. Dome, dome team against dome team, all good, all good. Um, last week, Nick Mullins looked pretty decent for the Vikings. Now, I don't expect that to continue. You can never expect these backup quarterbacks to hold on to not sucking for a long period of time. Eventually, who they are comes out. So, I don't know. But obviously, Justin Jefferson and that crew. Um, the most interesting player from the Vikings might be Ty Chandler in this one. Yes, the Lions are pretty good against the run. But Ty Chandler was great. Got all the volume last week. So I'm interested in him. Lions side, of course, everything's in play. Everything's in play. So Goff and his pass catcher, 47-point total, second highest total on the slate. Oh, man. Next up, we got the Jets. Jets favored at home against uh, Washington. You know, I said this last week, and I'll say it again this week. If whoever the quarterback is for the Jets, and if it's Zach Wilson, fine. Right. If, if he's playing one of his competent games, which happens maybe one out of four times, then, you know, all of Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall should absolutely smash, not just win, do well, but smash and break the slate. So my 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 approach with those two players is pairing them together. Either they're both in the lineup or neither. You need to play Jets need to play competent ball. They can do it every once in a while. But, you know, most of more often than not, it looks like last week where they're just horrible. Uh, the good thing going for them is Washington defense is league worst. So. Maybe, but that 37 point total gross. Seahawks at the Titans. Um, yeah, 41 and a half pointer, low total game. There's not too much going on on the Titans that I'm excited to to target, really. Probably nothing in this game. Uh, I think the Seahawks and specifically Seahawks wide receivers and more so Kenny Walker will be of interest for me here, even though Titans are pretty good against the run. Jaguars at the Bucks here has a 43 point total. Close game again, 21-22. You never know what happens in a game like this. Uh, but Trevor Lawrence got banged up last week. So really, everything comes down to Trevor Lawrence. Is he going to play? If Trevor Lawrence doesn't play and it's, you know, CJ beat hard, I, I think um, we're talking Bucks defense. We're talking Rashad White. I'd be loading up on sort of the, you know, Bucks dominate the game uh, approach to it. Beat hard, probably not that good. If Trevor Lawrence is in there, a whole different story. So not much to talk about in that game until we really know. This one's one of the exciting ones for me. Chicago at home taking on the, the the Cardinals and I just I love Chicago whenever I can whenever I can play Chicago 
offense in a game and it's a bad defensive team, this is when you want to target them. I'm talking Fields. I'm talking um, DJ Moore. I'm talking Cole Komet. The whole trio in play here. Love Fields. All that stuff. Uh, flip side on the Cardinals. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind some pieces from the Cardinals either here. Sure. Why not? We'll see who's healthy. Um, Marquise Brown has been sort of banged up all year. We'll see. But I think pieces from the Cardinals acceptable and super under the weather. Weather, and finally we have the you know pretty much the game of the week. I'm going to say here between the Cowboys at the Dolphins. You know, if this was a home game for the Cowboys, I'd be more concerned for the Dolphins. It's hard to pass against the Cowboys, but again, Tyree Kill is so good that it does not matter what kind of coverage you throw on him. I do think Tyree Kill will play in this game, and so I think you'll get like your average good version of the Miami offense. And they're the side that I'm more interested in. Um, but also, you know, Dak and, and, and company, this game absolutely has smash game appeal. Uh -oh. alert. Yep. That's the one. That's the one. So with all of that being said, let's jump over to DraftKings. And start to take a look at each position group. We're going to go through each one. We're going to talk through the positions. We're going to talk to the players. I'm really excited to talk about the, the the running back position this week. It's really weird. There's no elite running back. There's no 8K players. It's crazy how this slate has fallen out. So we're going to talk about all of that. Um, real quick, though, I do want to mention a couple of things that we have going on at DFS Army and Sharp App. Uh, first of all, at DFS Army, we have a special year-end promotion going on for new subscribers and this we we've never really done something like this before but hey we're pushing to get people in to see the tools it is an exciting time at the end of the year tons and tons of dfs going on and, and all the slates for for nfl so we've got a promo code it's promo code 2024 gets 24 percent off that is any membership that we have the vip is my favorite because it covers everything that we do at dfs army all the way down all the way down to the prop game, the pick them games, the prop optimizer tool, you know, the cheat sheets, the, the discord, the notes, the coaching, everything that we do at DFS army, every sport is covered. You get 24% off. So I don't know the, the VIP is 79 99. That's the one I check out. Of course you can do it for your NFL, NBA only, whatever you want. So promo code 2024, 24% off anything you, any of the subscriptions at DFS army. All right, let's jump in to the quarterback position for week 16. And right at the top, of course, Dak and Tua in that game of the week, boner alert game. Both of these are good plays. Um, I'm probably, I, I would lean probably Tua. I think one nice thing about the Dolphins is, uh, about the Cowboys is, you know, they're a good defensive team. It's not going to be easy to move the football, but they're also a really good offense. So the scoring has a chance to be back and forth in this one. So I, I like Dak here, and I like Tua. I'm not sure which one I like better as of this moment. They're about the same price. Normally, I'd lean the favorite. Let's see here. I'm assuming Miami's favored. Yeah, two-point favorite, a one-and-a-half point, so it's really close. Both, both of those quarterbacks most definitely in play. Justin Fields I love here at Arizona. Standalone play. Really easy to stack Fields in a game like this. So um, I definitely like Fields, and I'm going to – pop him in here just because like i said i think dak or Tua is a really obvious start i'm good with either one dak going with lamb Tua going with hill but it's also super obvious i don't think you could do dak lamb hill lamb hill and one of these quarterbacks in the same lineup might be asking too much here i want to plug in fields uh for our lineup for today but i want to go through the rest of the position group as well we got um jared goff in that Minnesota game, decent spot, but a little pricey for Jared Goff. He's only hit, I think, 30 once this year. Yeah, just last week. He's got a bunch of 25s, 26s, so 7, 14, 21, 28. You know, he's been floating around that 4X, but uh, I, I don't think he's going to burn you for not playing him too hard. But I, I you know, I don't mind it. I, I prefer fields. Trevor Lawrence, don't know if he's going to play. Jordan Love, yeah, he's not getting it done at this price. He's just not getting it done at this price. So I'm probably not going there. Um, Kyler Murray has mild interest, I guess. Very mild for me. It's a good matchup. Chicago. I'll probably end up with some exposure. Sam Howell, no. Baker Mayfield against Jacksonville. Baker Mayfield was the nuts QB in week 15. Who knew? Like I definitely didn't play him. He had the big game. Can he do it again? I'm leaning no. He did it. 
I'm 28 targets, 22 complete. He had the game of a lifetime. I really feel like he had a life, a, a, a life best game. And if you look at his entire season, I mean, it's been nothing but teens and teens and shitty numbers. I don't, I don't think I can chase last week's um, game. So I'll be off. I'll be out on that one. Um, Gardner Minshew, probably no, not at that price, especially Geno Smith. No flock, Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco could be, can be played here for Cleveland at 5,500 as well. I think that's okay. Drew Locke beat hard. Definitely not. Could it be Jacoby Brissett against the Jets this week? Maybe might get Jacoby Brissett. And I am hearing that Taylor Heineke might get the start for Atlanta at the Colts. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind, I guess. I guess. But for this lineup, I'm going to start with fields, right? Um, so let's jump over to the running back position, talk through some of these spots. Um, at the top, this is what I was talking about before. There's no Christian McCaffrey. There's no Alvin Kamara. None of these, none of these uh, more expensive running backs are available on the slate. No Barkley. So the top guy is Rashad White. How do you like them apples, right? Um, good matchup, I guess. Not really great, but... Okay matchup, I would call it. Jacksonville's actually really good against the run. I'm not sure I feel I need Rashad White for 7,500. Let's see, 740, 20, 20, about 30 points. He needs about 30 points to be worth rostering at that price. He's averaging 17, so I don't know about that. Or he most are very expensive for his range of outcomes as well. Um, Jonathan Taylor probably coming back this week. Might be mildly interesting, I guess. But coming off the injury, I'm a little concerned. But at the same time, it looks like they don't have anybody else. So mild interest there. Um, Devon HN also kind of like Mostert, a little overpriced for the, the expected role. You know, the upside is there, but it's just a little pricey right now. All right, moving down the list here, we've got uh, Gibbs and Montgomery. Let's see what these guys did. But um, Gibbs put up a big number this past week. Eleven uh, Looks like 11 uh, rushing attempts. Only uh, two targets here, but... That's what Gibbs is going to do. He's going to have to be hyper efficient, get it done on um, not as much volume more often than not. 27 fantasy points last week. Montgomery, um, 17 carries. So, and, and two. So, Montgomery got more work, scored less. But I think that's telling. That should be what we would expect to happen when the Lions win in a blowout. If I had to guess what's going to happen in this game, I expect the Lions to crush the Vikings here. So, this would be probably a situation where I'd lean more to a Montgomery script. Um, I think Derrick Henry has been proving over and over again this season that he just cannot be trusted as a fantasy asset just because the Titans offense is so shit. That's part of the problem. Their offense sucks. What are you going to do? So 16 carries, nine yards, nothing last week, five points. Um, he, you know, he'll score when, when the Titans are winning the game, he'll usually get a touchdown. So I'll give him that. But I don't think that Derrick Henry and those old legs can really justify the 7K salary level anymore. Tony Pollard's another disappointment machine as well. Listen, at some point, we got to accept that this fucker is not worth this salary. Now, I drafted Tony Pollard at the end, at the top of the second round. And in that team, I did not make the fantasy playoffs. Thank you, Tony Pollard. Right? He's been terrible this year. And no matter what the situation, even in great matchups, it's just been a disappointment. Even his best games getting 22, 20, 18, 22. And you know what? That's not going to cut it. You need 28 fantasy points to justify the salary. So if we've been playing him all year, I guess we go back to him. But enough, enough. I'm ready to capitulate on Tony Pollard. Uh, Travis Etienne, um, again, not a great spot. If it's the backup QB, I don't hate it. He does get a ton of volume um, in, in games when it works out. And I would say that, the Bucks defense is not quite as good against the run as you think. Aaron Jones, another tough one to trust. Bijan Robinson, can we trust Bijan at this point in the best? Another week. We get another week of Bijan in an elite, perfect, could not ask for a better matchup. Will they give him the ball? Will they run it to him? Seven carries last week against the Panthers? I have no idea. This team is a mystery. The coach is a mess. The coach is a freaking mess. He has no idea what he's doing. Arthur Smith is one of those people that pretends that they know what the fuck they're doing, but it's all fraud. And I don't know what the hell's going on with B. John Robinson, why they refuse to throw the ball to Drake London. These are things that make no sense. When you're up against the Panthers, just run the football. Cordero Patterson's coming out. What are you 
doing? What are you doing? I have no idea what he's doing, but whatever. I can't trust Bijan at this point. Outside of crazy tournament play, cannot be trusted. One guy I do kind of like those Kenny Walker and Kenny Walker. He can get it done no matter what the situation. Um, even against a good defensive rush defense like the Titans, I don't think it matters. Kenny Walker is really good out there. He's got the fresh legs and um, he's got the volume. 19 carries, three targets uh, last week against an Eagles defense that is much better versus the run than the pass. So I like Kenny Walker at 6,200. I think he's too cheap. Um, note that his price has come down. I feel like he was way more expensive earlier in the season, and that is confirmed. Like, take a look here. So for a big stretch of the season, 7,200, 7K, 7K, 768. This is important. He's had a couple of bad games in some tough spots. All of a sudden, the salary comes down significantly. One thing about Kenny Walker to understand is, you know, this is a road game. That's always not as good. And Kenny Walker's floor is extremely low because he's not a big pass catching weapon. He can catch a pass, but he's not a big pass catching weapon. So there's always a little risk with him. Brees Hall, my goodness, what a great spot this could be. The Jets are favored. I don't know how they're favored. I don't know who the QB is, but the Jets are favored. They're at home. These are the spots where 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 Brees Hall and Brees Hall ruined lineups last week, which makes him low owned. So this is a very very good spot for Hall. I, I cannot deny it. It's a good situation for him. Am I going to pull the trigger? I don't know. I don't know. I am in tournaments. I have to. But again, I'm going to be pairing him up with Garrett Wilson because I just think if Hall's doing well, it's the whole Jets offense that's being competent. But if they're if they're having another week like last week where they just implode, no one is going to do well. So you cannot trust that in um, let's call it cash type games. Bijan Robinson, uh, I mean Brian Robinson Jr. Not sure if he's going to be healthy. Not a, not interested in using him at all. Anyway, James Conner. I'm I'm mildly interested in, in James Conner here this week. Uh, it is a pretty good matchup. Chicago is good versus the run, but generally I think the game will be close. So I have a little bit of interest in him there. Um, Chuba Hubbard, the volume is crazy. Uh, two targets, 22 carries. Didn't do a ton with it, but he's in my player pool this week once again. Um, these are the volume guys. Ty Chandler as well. Ty Chandler is assuming that assuming that Madison's out. Ty Chandler is who I want to play here. I like the price, 5,600. I like the fact that he got 26 touches, 27 opportunities last week. They really didn't mix anybody else in, and I just want volume at the running back position, so I'm going to pop him in there. Um, I was going to go with Singletary as my second person on the list. Uh, 26 carries, four target, five targets, four receptions. Amazing volume for him. I don't know if I love this Cleveland matchup, but the volume is amazing for Singletary, and he really is that guy that I'm strongly thinking about for the second spot here. But I'm going to go a little more expensive with my running back. But just to cover the rest of this group here, you got Ford never gets more than 12 touches. Gibson, no. Charbonnet, no, no, no. Maybe Trey Sermon if he starts for you know, the injured Moss slash Taylor on the Colts. That's about it down here. So for a second spot, I'm going to plug in Walker here and hope for the best. That's all I can do. I like the price point. If Seattle plays a competent game, I think Walker will, um, will be scoring. And it's really hard for the Titans to run away with a game. So I think it will be close and competitive, and that should lead to scoring opportunities for Kenny Walker. All right. What I like to do from here is just jump over to defense. And there's one that really stands out real, real easy, kind of quickly. And that's the box. And my assumption with the box here is that Trevor Lawrence will not play. If Trevor Lawrence doesn't play and, you know, again, uh, beat hard comes in to be the quarterback for the Jaguars then I want the defense at home that's going up against the team with that quarterback. So it's going to be Jaguars, for, uh, Buccaneers for me. What I love is they're really cheap offense. They're really cheap defense, and it gives us a lot of flexibility in this lineup. So, boom, we just plug them in. Jump over to tight end before we finish it out at the wide receiver position, um, primarily because I like to see how much salary we have available and just understand this position group. So running through 
the tight end position. Let's start at the top. Sam Laporta. You know, Sam Laporta is the top dog this year. Like he has been great, um, really solid tight end, great scoring. Uh, big week last week for Laporta. 28 points on just five receptions. Just very impressive. How many touchdowns? Three touchdowns. That's uh, that's some efficiency right there. Not sure we can replicate that here this week. Hawkinson, the other side of that game. Great. The guy who has been the most impressive, though. Honestly, this is not the kind of volume you ever see a tight end get. I've never. This is unbelievable. 10, 9, 9, 7, 9 are the target numbers over the last five weeks. If we go back even further, there's a 14 uh, banger in there. And the rest of this was when Ertz was on the team. So this team just continues to throw to the tight end. It's something, it's a phenomenon at this point. And I don't think we really want to fight it here. The matchup is better than it's been. Um, there are other names that are pretty good at tight end this week. Uh, but McBride really pops for me as the guy that we probably want to be playing. Um, I do want to go through the rest of these guys, though. Um, Evan Ingram has been seeing elevated targets the last few weeks ever since Zay uh ever since Zay Jones not Zay Jones ever since Christian Kirk got hurt you know he gets a lot of targets 8 9 12 6 so uh two monster weeks uh mixed in the last couple of weeks he's in my he's definitely in the player pool David Njoku definitely as well a uh, couple good games in a row here lots and lots of targets for Njoku and Njoku's another one these guys for next year just keep the names in mind keep you know don't just think uh, it's not just Laporta. It's Trey, uh, McBride. It's Njoku. These are the future class of the tight end position. So remember them for next year in fantasy, for sure. Um, J uh, Ferguson is another one. Put him on that list, too. In this Dallas-Miami game, I'll probably keep him tied to that game for the most part. But um, certainly of interest uh, as well. Cole Komet here with Fields. If we wanted to correlate this, we could definitely play Komet with Fields. I don't need to triple stack in. I'm going to have DJ Moore in this one, but if I was going to, sure, why not? In the lower price zone, if we need a cheaper tight end, I mean, Tucker Croft coming up another good game. I think he put up uh, 15. There you go. Uh, six, four, uh, four receptions. Got a touchdown, 15.7 fantasy points last week. Not bad. You know, the usual suspects as we get down to the cheaper zones here with Chig and, you know, no one who's going to excite us that much, but all kind of playable spots. Taylor Conklin, eh, Kate Otten, all those all those guys. If we need to pay all the way down, but I'm going to drop Trey McBride in here for now. All right, let's jump over to the wide receiver position. And listen, this is a week where I do want to try to have enough money to pay up for one of these superstar wide receivers. Um, it could be any one of them, but you know, my top choice is probably going to be Tyreek Hill. Uh, I'm going to assume that he will be healthy. I think they held him out last week, but he could have played. And I think by this week, he'll be fine. Let's see if there's any practice reports. No, not nothing yet. It's still too soon, too early in the week. Um, CD Lamb also, you know, just great productivity the last few weeks. In order to pay off the 9K, 9, 20, 36, he needs it in the 30s. And he's not doing that. All the time, there's a 40, there's a 30. So you have that little run, right? 36, this was good. And last couple games haven't quite gotten there for him. So maybe he's due. Maybe he's due to get that 30 plus. He really needs about 35, 36. Um, Amin Ra, yes. Justin Jefferson. You know, it's hard for me to like Justin Jefferson as much as these other guys because it feels like Jefferson's still kind of trying to knock the rust off. The good thing is he's the cheapest of them. You know, Nick Mullins is his QB, so it's really hard for like a Nick Mullins to produce a 36-pointer for a wide receiver. So there's a couple of things working against Jefferson being the better, one of the better plays here. I think the other studs here are where I would rather go. Eh, Evans, sure, why not? Pittman, uh, probably not healthy, but we'll have to see. But I'm going to start this one off with DJ Moore, of course, pairing him up with Justin Fields. When Fields is doing well, Moore is doing well. It's just that simple. And um, last week, Fields didn't do a whole lot. Yeah, there it is. Um, last week, Fields didn't do a whole lot, and it showed in DJ Moore's performance. He didn't do a whole lot either. But he should see between 8 to 12 targets in a game like this, and that is great. Um, 6900 reasonable enough price that I can stomach it. All right. 
matchup wise, one of the big matchups we've liked all year is wide receivers against the Titans, right? I have Kenny Walker in here and that's fine, but the Titans have been more exploitable via the pass. Um, so Metcalf, maybe, right? A little pricey for me, but maybe. Um, I do like Amari Cooper quite a bit as well. Um, he put up a big score for only four receptions last week, but Amari Cooper's such a stud. He gets such a bad rap. This guy's really good. Um, 6,400, but taking catches from uh, passes from Joe Flacco, you know, so keep it in mind. Again, Ridley, I don't know who's going to be the quarterback for Jacksonville, so I can't really go there. Godwin chasing last week. Big week last week for Godwin. Cannot deny it. 28 point. He finally had a good game. I'm not going to assume he's going to do that again. Hopkins, maybe, probably not. Addison, also not somebody I'm super excited about, although he had a big game last week. Nick Mullins, man, that was that was wild. You know, one fun way to adjust this lineup, you want to get crazy? I'm going to get crazy. You know what? YOLO. What if we went, I don't know if I want to do this, but we went Hall, and I just want to emphasize that these two guys really need to only be played together, but I, I don't think this is what I'm going to end up with. But I just want to emphasize that if you play Garrett Wilson, you might as well play Brees Hall. Those two go together, right? It's either competent Jets or horrible Jets, and there's no in-between with this team, so keep it in mind. But I don't think any of this really works because one of the things you really want to try to get to this week is one of these super studs, like a CD Lamb. We'll see if we can make it work. It's tough early in the week because those extreme values haven't necessarily presented themselves, but let's see what we can find down the list here. So... Um, Josh Downs at 5,500. Uh, obviously, Michael Pittman seems to have gotten hurt, but I don't know if that helped Josh Downs that much last week. So I'm, I'm, you know, he, he's of interest, but I'm not going crazy. Tyler Lockett, maybe. Um, you know, Reed had a great week last week where I was all in on Reed last week. It's a much worse situation for him this week. Same thing with Brown. Um, I don't mind Drake London here. I do not mind Drake London down there, but. I think we got to get down and find some extreme value. Zay Jones, no. PJ Washington, no. My, uh, this is who I wanted to take a look at here. But there's a couple of names down here that I think are reasonable. So let's take a look at what Wilson did. Three targets, zero receptions. That is not a good situation. But I don't mind going right back to uh, Wilson. He just was coming back off of injury. Tough matchup. Uh, gets a much better matchup against Chicago this week. And um, again, with with Marquise Brown banged up, I think um, Michael Wilson is interesting. Uh, Mingo, four to five, more targets, more receptions. Again, never puts up a big score, but at least is somewhat playable. So if I had to be down here under 4K, I think it's uh, right now it's Wilson or Mingo maybe. None of these really pop at all as somebody that I'm going to be actively looking to try to get into lineups this week. Yeah, and it doesn't get better as you go down the list. So unless some uh, extreme value presents itself, which I don't see why it would, this is going to be a challenging week to um, put together really, I'm going to call it studs and duds type lineups. I'm not seeing too many players on the dud side that I'd be comfortable with. Um, one player I think that is in a pretty good spot here is Jackson Smith and Jigba at 4,500. And that's kind of the way I'm leaning. I'm looking at Wicks as well, but I'm kind of leaning this way. Um, Jackson Smith and Jigba. So if we plug him in, that leaves us with 5,700 for the flex. And, um, you know, there's, uh, I think, some running back or talented players here at this price point. Singletary, Chuba Hubbard playable. But actually what I want to do now is see if we can't get a little more. So I'm going to try to find the cheapest viable running back for this lineup. Yeah, it was really Wall Hall or or Walker. If we go, if we went back to Walker, we get rid of Wilson, who is only with Brees Hall, right? I'll plug in. I got Injigma in there. Oof, this lineup is just, uh, yeah, it's not the easiest to build. I want to see what happens when we plug in, and I think what it what it's going to tell us is we Trey McBride needs to be treated. So. Yeah, here we go. Let's just plug in. Yeah, can't do it. Can't do CD Lamb. Can't quite get to that price point. 
I want to play like a Justin Jefferson, I can make it work. But actually, I think the better move here is to go with a secondary stud just because of the way the salaries is, is falling. And that brings me down back to, yeah, back to, I think this was the right way. Wilson, Hall, and we play it for Jets are favored and they play competent somehow. And then just close it out with whoever you want. Even Chuba Hubbard, who's unexciting. Devin Singletary, unexciting. Um, Jalen Reed, kind of okay. So any any anybody in this zone here, we could close it out. The other option would be, of course, punt the tight end position. Full punt in the tight end position like Taylor Croft. And then uh, finish it out with uh, a different kind of... Ooh, I like this one here. Rashad White. How about that? Or... Pittman, if he played, even a Mike Evans works there. So there you have it. Anyway, it's our first look for DraftKings NFL week 16. You're going to see always with these first looks, we got to find some value. We got to figure out a path, but um, I've seen a few different ways to go and attack this one so far. The most exciting for me is just that we finally have some games like that Miami Dallas game, the Chicago uh, Arizona game where we're really going to get some potential exciting back and forth scoring going on. So I'm excited for it. Um, one last note. If you are a fan of DFS army, we think you're really going to like the sharp app. Um, if you're into sports betting at all, sharp app has all kinds of tools, the Proptimizer tool, which uh, really just crushes props in NBA and NFL and all the different sports and really delivers you exactly what your edge is. We've got the AI tools for predicting games and uh, the discord just an incredible suite of tools, including the Sharp Report. Everything is free this week. So we've had a we've decided to open up Sharp App to everybody for one week to check it out. NFL Week 16. So the Sharp App, if you just download it, all of the premium features are now open to the public. The Proptimizer tool, the the betting handles, the 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 Pro Picks, all of it free. So check out the Sharp App. Just give it a download and take a look. At all of the options we've opened them up for the week for you guys to check it out. So I know you guys have been asking me. And we set it all up. Check out the Sharp app, sharp.app on uh, online, sharp.app, or download the app on the App Store or mobile phone. I will see you guys later in the week. We've got tons and tons of DFS content coming out this week for the two gamers, the three gamers, the four gamers, everything, the full slate, everything. So stick around. Make sure you're, you've subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys.